committee meeting on June 7th, 2021 at 6.31 p.m. Turn your six... mic on. Mike. Lights on. The lights on. Oh, I need is to it? get closer. Okay. There, you there you go. All right. We have six items on the agenda. First item on the agenda is an event street closure application for the 4th of July celebration. And Paul, if you want to walk through that, go ahead. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, tonight in front of you, you have the annual 4th of July celebration event app uh, submitted by our mayor, um, who is uh, acting on behalf of Community Action on Not this application. <laughs> Uh, very similar to how the event has been done in the past. In fact, we've seen this map for many years. Um, it's the standard parade route. Um, the staging for the parade will be at CLC and will start at Kiwanis Park and the parade travels north on East River Road, east on Laurel Street, south on 5th Street and west back to College Drive. Um, there's just going to be an announcer booth uh, this year and music broadcast from that spot at the high school football field along with an MC. Uh, there will be restrooms provided on near Don Adams and Adamson Field. Uh, some banners placed. Um, we have the traffic control request already um, from the applicant and um, all businesses along the route are closed that day. So. But uh, they'll have plenty of advertising, uh, print, social media, PSAs about the event. Uh, the police department has already been uh, well in the loop on this one, being that it's such a big event and there's a lot of people that come. So um, really we're just recommending approval under the conditions that the applicant remove any banners along East River Road after the event. Um, and just that the coordination continue with the uh, police department and anything regarding traffic control prior to the event. So, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry, so. Okay, glad to hear we're having a 4th of July celebration again, back to somewhat normal. Uh, it's a 6 p.m. parade this time. It usually is at, at, at like a 2 p.m. parade. Is that yeah. because there's no concert this time? Or is I think so. I think they just pushed it back so it's a, a shorter time frame. They're yeah. not having any uh, concert down in the football field sure. area. and um, So they're just playing music from the radio station, I believe. Gotcha. All right. I have a motion if you're ready. Go ahead. Um, I move to approve the attached event street closure application under the conditions uh, the applicant remove any banners and signs after the event and that the applicant ensures to coordinate the activities of the day regarding traffic control, et cetera, with the police department. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, go to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Against same sign. Motion passes. All right. Item number two is a request to appro approve improvement 19-01, change order one, Northwest 4th Street reconstruction project. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so when we were uh, installing the roundabout at 4th Street, um, we had a project meeting and we realized that there was one conflict with our storm sewer and a gate valve box. And uh, this normally wouldn't be that big of an issue, but the gate valve box that we had an issue. So it's the little thing you see in the street is the box and they put a big wrench down to turn the gate valve on and off. And this normally wouldn't be that big of an issue if there was a conflict between the storm sewer and the gate valve. but. This gate valve was the last one before the water booster station that serves Riverside Drive and Beaver Dam Road. So if we were to turn that gate valve off, that would uh, cut all the water off basically in the north, north town area. And that would be a bad thing. That yeah. would not be so it was what yeah. we did um, to avoid that conflict and it kind of served two purposes. Um, we realigned the storm sewer that was in conflict with that. So um, as part of the original plan, we had planned to just replace that gate valve and move it. But with that conflict, we actually decided to reroute the storm sewer instead. And so with that, we had to get um, a little bit different structure for the one that was in conflict with the gate valve. And then we also had to order a different structure for the storm sewer. So there was one new structure, one that was modified to basically reroute it around that gate valve box. And with that, we also are avoiding a potential freezing concern because um, this storm sewer that we're kind of, we're moving around that gate valve is like a 48 inch, so it's a big pipe. And in the winter time, cold air comes down in that pipe. And with a water main being that close to a storm sewer that big, we have some issues, potential issues with freezing. 
So by realigning the storm sewer, we feel that it actually kind of is a win-win because we also not only killed everyone's water, but we also um, took care of that potential freezing issue in the future. And so um, with that big of structures that we had, those are close to about $1,000 a foot. So when they construct those manhole structures, for every foot they construct, it's about $1,000. So you'll see the two structures that we had to, well, the one we had to order new and the one we had to modify, uh, the total change order amount was about $17,750. Um, so this, that whole change order will be uh, reimbursable through our grant we received along with anything over and above that uh, because this is a state aid road, we'll be able to use our state aid funds to reimburse ourselves for that expense. So uh, staff is recommending that we approve that attached change order uh, that was recommended to us by the engineer, Bolton and Mink, uh, in the amount of $17,747.87. Okay, makes sense to me. And Kevin gets to keep his water on. <laughs> nice catch. Yeah. Ready with the motion. Go ahead. So I'll make the motion to recommend the approval of the attached <clears throat> change order in the amount of $17,747.87 for the improvement 1901 Northwest 4th Street Reconstruction Project. Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Again, same sign. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 3, request to approve MnDOT land purchase for 2023 Trunk Highway 25 Railroad Bridge Replacement Project. This is you again, Paul, right? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, through uh, MnDOT's design process, uh, they're at about like a 90% plan right now, which is getting close to completion. And with that, uh, they're looking at right-of-way acquisition, and there's some areas that they need to acquire right away. And this map is a little confusing, but I'll kind of explain what's going on here. Um, so basically, MnDOT's looking to acquire two temporary construction easements, which are just uh, during construction, they need to slope some ground that we own, and then they'll return it back to us. And there's one parcel they need to purchase from us. Um, so uh, in total, they're offering, offering us $4,000 for the parcel and two uh, slope easements uh, in damages. I attached the appraisal report uh, or the min uh, MDA report if you guys are interested in that. Uh, MnDOT does carry certified appraisers on staff to do this kind of stuff. Um, but really is what we're looking at, and I'll just walk up to the screen here so you guys can see it. The bridge we're talking about is right about here. So this is the bridge in this area. The, so we own this pit, that pit on the left side as you drive out of town on 25. This temporary construction easement, the red line or the green line right here, it's a 16-foot easement that they want to acquire, and that's just a temporary easement. The parcel they're looking to acquire goes from this green line with the three dots to this red line, and that's parcel 305. So it's right here is what they're acquiring. And then this easement is a slope easement from this red line to that red line. And that's about 25 feet of temporary construction easement. So really, it's land that MnDOT already pretty much uses for trunk highway right-of-way. Um, MnDOT actually doesn't own any property necessarily. They have easement for trunk highway purposes, and so that's why the city needs to sell them this. Um, it looks like it's right-of-way in itself already, but technically the city owns that. Um, so that's why they have to purchase it from us. That parcel 305 looks like it's part of the city right-of-way which it is, but it's also, um, I don't know if Joe has a better explanation of right of way, but it's hard to explain. But MnDOT technically doesn't own land per okay. se. They, uh, they have easement for trunk highway purposes in most circumstances. Judging by the amount of paperwork on this item, I assume that it was some kind of technicality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, they're buying land that was already right of way, in my opinion. It, uh, it's mapped that way. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, by title, it is the city's. So they so. gave us $4,000, then they can use it for whatever purpose they need, and then they return it to the city? For the easements, yes. The temporary construction easements are that, but okay. the permanent right-of-way, that parcel 305, is actually going to the state of Minnesota. Okay. I have just one question, just looking at this. Um, you know, you talk about uh, depositing the funds into Fund 401. Do you want that as part of the motion? 
I would say so just to keep that clear because we can use then those funds to cover any potential uh, cost share that we have uh, for the project. Um, I think that would be a good use if they're buying land for that specific project. I think it should go back to the project if we have any addition for our not only our trail project but our uh, the bridge project itself mm -hmm. if we have any funds contributed to that. So that would be my recommendation is that they go into that fund. Right. Once we receive that. Okay. Anybody have a motion? I got a motion. Okay. Um, I move that we adopt the attached resolution uh, in which approves the sale of parcel 305 and the two temporary construction easements the state of Minnesota for $4,000 uh, and as identified in the attached exhibit and that those funds be put into fund 401 to offset any potential cost share associated with the bridge replacement project and attached uh, trail projects slated for 2025 construction. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, same sign. Motion passes. And moving to item number four, request to approve testing services contract for improvements 20-05 and 20-06, Madison Street and Southeast Brainerd construction project. Go ahead, Paul. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, you can see two proposals in front of you tonight. Um, last year, um, we had a new company, Independent Testing Technologies, that actually bid on our local project um, up in Northeast Brainerd. And uh, you'll see someone that we use quite often in Braun Intertech also propose on this project. Um, so testing is a little bit weird where it it's really dependent on how fast the contractor is moving or how slow the contractor is moving, how much production they get in one day. And so you'll see there's some differentiation between ITT's proposal and Braun's proposal as it relates to um, how many tests are being performed or how many times they're expecting to be on site. Um, Braun's tends to be a little more conservative in how many tests and we rarely ever even approach what we authorize for testing services under a Braun contract. ITT tends to be a little more, you know, um, you know, not as conservative as Braun is as far as number of tests they're planning to perform. And so that is part of the large cost differentiation um, between the 8,550 that ITT proposes and I don't remember what uh, Braun was proposing for a cost, but there is a substantial difference between the two. Um, some of it due to that and just in general, ITT is cheaper uh, for doing their testing services uh, per test, per se. Um, you know, they do concrete tests, gravel tests, and in general, uh, ITT, by looking at these, they are um, cheaper in that regard. But I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware and taking that into consideration when you're looking at these is that Braun is being a lot more conservative in their approach and saying that it could be as much as this much and we rarely ever get to that point, mm -hmm. but we're still recommending we go with ITT. We worked with them last year. We had good success with them. They did what we wanted them to do. Um, this is a non-state aid project, so we are comfortable. Um, you know, Braun does a very, very good job of working with MnDOT, uh, working with their lab services to make sure that we're meeting all the testing requirements on state aid projects, but being that this is a local project, we uh, wanted to keep costs as low as we can, and. We feel that uh, using ITT like we did last year and having them do our services uh, was just fine and they did a really good job. So uh, we're recommending that we actually go with ITT's proposal for uh, 8,000 and what was it? $8,550. Yep. Okay. I think it makes sense to me. I don't know if anybody has any discussion yeah. on the matter. Straightforward. I'll move to recommend authorizing the testing service contract with independent testing technologies in that amount, 8550 Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, let's go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against, same sign. Motion passes. Item five is a request to review South 6th Street aesthetic policy for 2022 construction. And go ahead and explain this one again, Paul. All right, so um, uh, MnDOT is currently working on uh, the design for South 6th Street from Joseph Street to Greenwood Street. Um, you guys recall a couple months ago, we went over the final layout of this project. 
Um, we had a meeting two weeks ago regarding just aesthetic treatments that the city would like to see. Um, you know, being that retaining wall, any colored concrete, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and so what we did is we looked at the items that we could potentially put some aesthetic treatments on. And the two that come to mind are the retaining wall, uh, Joseph to uh, I think Ronald Street, there's that large hill where the sidewalk is going and there'll be a, a large retaining wall there, much like you see on College Drive. And then there'll be uh, kind of in that same area on the opposite side of the street, right where the frontage road is and meets the highway, there's that big um, mm. that slope that is really hard to mow that's very narrow uh, between the frontage road and the highway. And the intent there is to uh, make that easier to maintain and potentially do a colored concrete treatment or some sort of concrete along there just to slope that down from the frontage road to the highway so we don't have to mow it. Um, the other uh, thing that we could consider is the medians down the middle of the highway. There's gonna be some medians in some spots. Um, as you saw from the um, uh, layout and with that we can incorporate some aesthetic colored treatments on those two if you guys prefer uh, much like you see on like college drive or our fourth street roundabout which has a colored concrete median uh, that red in color mm -hmm. um, what staff is recommending is we try to match close to what we have on the college drive um, retaining wall as far as color and look uh, to try to keep that uh, color and look the same and to incorporate what we've incorporated in the past for colored concrete that being red on the medians and red on the uh, sloped concrete on the opposite side of the highway that keeps it pretty simple um, the sidewalk up closer towards town is gray right now and I think it would look a little funny if we incorporated a different colored sidewalk yeah. and so uh, staff wouldn't recommend doing any type of colored treatment for the sidewalk itself but um, any median, I would say that, you know, for the small project costs they are, um, MnDOT allows for 5% of the total cost of a retaining wall to be um, aesthetic treatment related. So they'll pay for 5% of that aesthetic treatment and then the rest of it would be uh, the city's cost. So, for example, if it's a $100,000 retaining wall, MnDOT would allow $5,000 for color basically mm -hmm. um, and anything above that would be the city's cost and I don't think the colored concrete is that much more I mean they add some dye to it but it's not it anything it's going to be a very minimal cost compared you know comparatively to the project itself and right. the city already has very little uh, skin in the game on this one anyways so I, I think making it match at college dri college drive would be the best way to go I think yep Yep. Um, the only question I have is the, the big stones compared to a concrete wall. Is that a huge cost difference? I know the, the colored concrete's not, but those big giant stones, is that, so is they, that a lot more expensive or is it just... They you know? actually are doing a poured in place wall, so they're not doing the block retaining walls okay. uh, to put those in place. So they'll pour that and then they'll face it. Um, the forms will have that stone face on it. Okay. So it'll be one singular wall because they found that to be easier to maintain long term so okay. it won't be blocks like you see on college drive it'll look like blocks but it'll be solid concrete right but as long as yeah we have the theme going then great yeah yeah I love it ties the two together i like that love it and, and then I, with that i think we'll request mindot send us some renderings of what it looks like i'll send them some pictures of that wall and um, maybe we'll get some renderings of what they're because they have landscape architects and folks on staff that can show right. us what that wall will look at like especially so and use the use the colored concrete wherever we can. I, I think that looks great. Obviously, the sidewalks. If we keep those, you know, the same throughout the city, those that's easiest. But yeah. I like the the median idea too. So, are are we looking for a motion on this or just um, a, a, a verbal recommendation? I don't think we need a motion. I think that gives me direction at this point. And if we get some renderings, maybe we can. But that's just kind of a policy thing that you know we can continue. Right. down the road with it's not really a written policy it's more of just uh we're trying to keep things consistent so i just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page with that i have had some questions on that uh regarding um how far back the wall goes and fences and things like that from uh one of the one of the citizens that lives on that block um 
but that's something that we can revisit as we get closer. So. Yeah, I think, if I may, Mr. Chair, MnDOT's yeah. right-of-way staff has been visiting each property owner now because I think they're purchasing some temporary easements from each of the property owners. They're not going past the right-of-way with any walls or fences, but they are requesting some easements uh, for the construction so that they can get everything sloped nice. But I think um, there's stakes out in folks' yards now, and they'll be yep. able to kind of see where that wall is going to be and how it... Is it a two-tiered wall? Um, I'm not sure if they've gotten that far in the design yet. Okay. I think it's a one tier, to be honest, because okay. it's a single poured in place, but um, I don't know if they have it designed yet or if they've looked at that from a, a geotechnical tipping kind of standpoint. So, Okay. And the only other question, I don't want to take too much time on this one, but we have those boulevards along South 6th for a big part of it, and they're looking a little rough right now. Are we doing that again? Or are we doing... The sidewalk right up against the curb. No, MnDOT is doing the five-foot boulevard again. That all got burnt off with yeah. the uh, salt usage at MnDOT. And I have brought that to their attention that um, in the past that they had really nice grass growing. And right. then they burned it all off. And there's there's not really a good alternative. You want the snow storage capacity, yeah. which is part of it. But you also want your boulevards to look nice. But it's kind of a catch-22 because MnDOT does use so much salt on the highways that well maybe we come back with colored concrete turf to fill those colored right turf astro turf bring chunks of the football field out there it would be a good way to do it as far as a hardscape look instead of a you know um there was talk about trees in that boulevard space too um that's all that's well with the plowing eventually that would become an issue too yeah but so i mean there's Things to consider, it. but I definitely understand it looked like, especially the first year after construction, yeah. when it was half green and half burnt off. It it's was, almost like they have to replant every year. Yeah. You know, right. I don't know if that'll always be that way, but yeah. that's what it is right now. But okay. So you have enough I'm good. direction there? Thank you. Good. All right. Moving to item six. Uh, we have an appeal for 1518 Quince nuisance abatement. And is this David Chansky? Yep, I'll take okay. this, Mr. Chair. So I'll just uh, give a brief background of the purpose of this appeal and this hearing. Uh, then I'll turn over to Attorney Langle to kind of give some background on how this um, hearing should proceed. Uh, so on May 18th of this year, the Community Development Department issued a order of abatement to Ms. Cheryl Strand at 1518 Quint Street for violation of Section 900 of the City Code, which states, no person shall keep, maintain, or otherwise house more than a total of four cats or dogs over the age of four months within a household of the city uh, of Brainerd. And then it says housing, keeping, or maintaining more than four dogs is considered operating a commercial kennel, which is deemed a nuisance by section 900.11. In that, uh, the city code in section 2010.13 subdivision 6A states that those issued a notice of a nuisance abatement have 14 days from the day of the order is issued to comply with the code. Um, if compliance is not had, then the city will abate the nuisance and any cost incurred for that abatement would then be assessed to the property. The recipient of an order may request a hearing before the hearing examiner, which per the same section of the code is the safety and public works committee of the city council. It, but that hearing must be requested within 14 days of the order. Uh, Ms. Strand submitted That's the attached right. appeal on Friday, May 28th, so within that 14-day uh, window, and that's where we are here this evening. And then I'll hand it over to uh, Attorney Lingle to kind of go over how we should proceed. Chair O'Day, so the process is, is kind of laid out there on the case. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Strand, as the property owner has the burden of proof so this is an appeal so she's got the burden of proof she goes first and states her case um, uh, we can go ahead and uh, list, hear her case at that time we have the right to cross-examine her or any witnesses that she may have um, uh, that supports her her uh, her appeal and then once she is finished presenting her evidence, then the city has the right to present evidence if it feels as necessary. It may not feel as necessary. Um, and uh, Ms. Strand then would have the opportunity to cross-examine any witnesses the city may have. At the end of that, the two sides can give a brief closing statement if they want to. It's not necessary or anything. This isn't a terribly complicated issue. Um, but 
at that time, the, um, the committee needs to decide what it's going to do based upon the evidence that it hears, uh, whether that is to um, ask staff or Ms. Strand or whomever to draft some findings or uh, depending upon what's said, to continue the hearing to another day or, or whatever. We can discuss that at that time, but there are different options that may be available depending upon what, um, what is said during the appeal. We can, we can deal with that as it comes up. So that's kind of where we're at. At this point, I would just open it up, the, uh, the appeal hearing to uh, Ms. Strand and, and let her state her case. Ms. Strand, are you with us? Did she have to hit something on her phone to? He was there earlier. He was there. Cheryl? Cheryl, are you there? Yeah, we're having a really tough time with our bandwidth. Okay. We couldn't hear it. We couldn't hear anything. Go ahead. It's your turn to uh, to give your side. So you can go ahead and and give us your reason for your appeal. And we'll try we to keep it. We couldn't hear anything, but our... can you hear us? I can. Yes, we can. Um, well, the reason for our appeal basically is simple. Uh, you you cited us as a city already through animal control, and that has not completed yet. The judge has yet to give his decision. And then, David, you decided to cite us based on the exact same ordinance just because it's written on a different piece of paper does not make it any different. You can, you can say it 12 times but it's still the exact same thing. And if you recall, you would not speak to me because you yourself said the city has cited you. Um, it's the exact same thing. You can't cite me twice on the exact same thing. No, that's double jeopardy. Um, we're not done yet in court. That will be completed August 30th now. The judge will give his decision. Um, you knew this we were very public about this business it ended in my lap for three years you are dealing with me here our city administrator told me very clearly when i was cited i had decided then to not deal with any more dogs not accept any more calls or transfer any and she told me cheryl no you continue you don't end your business you continue do what you're doing and I decided at that time to go ahead and continue, and I did do more adoptions because she said that. Jennifer said that. Comfortable that it was okay to continue. Um, I assumed that the city would support a rescue. And then you, David Chansky, were the one that told me to first apply for a CUP, then you said no. It's the city to change the ordinance. And then, of course, I got the citations. And, and you wouldn't speak because the city gave uh, citations. And then you came around and said, well, slap me 250 bucks, and we'll go for a double. We'll go for a CUP application slash change of ordinance. Well, that's what I did because I trusted you. And immediately you said no. That was a predetermined talk. Tonight is the night that was supposed to be heard uh, determination on that request. But here I am appealing two threats, two violations, and an abatement. This is insane. You chased us out of our home. Of 25 years we're sitting in a 33 foot RV right now with 10 dogs we're trying to sell our home as far as we're concerned the city can buy our home 
the city can pay us for this inconvenience. You don't come at us and threaten to take our business away when you knew full well that we were in business all, all year long and then all of a sudden make threats like you did? This is playing dirty. This is not the Brainerd that I know. Now the appeal is based on just on the simple fact that just because you put it on a different piece of paper does not make it right. Now we paid, if you can hear me, we You're starting to cut out right now, Cheryl. We you're starting to cut out. Our personal dogs. We found our. Cheryl. Cheryl, can you hear me? Found out that we weren't supposed to. Cheryl, we can't we hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. We but were we... not supposed to register the personal dogs. Cheryl, could you call us? We should have been stopped at the counter. Cheryl? Yeah. Cheryl, could you call us instead? Yes. Use a phone? Yes. That might work better because you're cutting in and out a lot. I will try and look. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You can stay on here until we get until we get you on. Give me the a phone. number. You have a number, Sean? Do you see it on the screen? Highlighted? No. No. Cheryl, that number? One eight four four nine nine two four seven two six. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. You'll need a meeting number, I think, when you get there. Yep. What's the meeting number? What is it? One eight seven. What is it? Sean's reading it to you. Seven four eight zero seven nine five six. What does she have to hit? Okay, we've got it. Okay. okay, we're here. All right. Anyways, we we left. It's feedback. We bought property two mornings after you denied our request for the ordinance change. All we wanted was what all other cities have is just a permit to run an in-home rescue. Nothing further. We ran three years with no incident, no anything. Nothing. No loose dogs, no incident. Um, don't understand why, like I said, if we wanted a liquor license, you guys would come running and hug us. Crazy. We just wanted to say so. Um, no, we bought property two mornings after, you know all this, two mornings after you denied the request because we saw this coming. You come at us like vipers, threatening, two, two threats, literal threats, then two violations, which were seriously, I mean, you can't do that. You just can't send the same violations that we're still in court for. That's impossible. They need to be retracted. Then you send us an abatement. Are you serious? You're going to come and take the dogs? We left on the, I left on the 17th with the rescue dog. Clem stayed with, with the personal dog until the 18th. My son came on the 18th with his dog and helped Clem move some more personal property. Our house was up for sale before that. We immediately put it up for sale. 25 years in our home, we raised children and grandchildren there. We love being there. You Cheryl? chased us Cheryl? away. What? This was this was your five minutes. We're going to do five minutes um, from the side of the city as well. I think we got your argument pretty clear. Um, so we're going to hear from. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is this isn't fair. 
I understand what you're saying. We're gonna we're gonna hear both sides and then we will comment afterwards. Okay. So so we're gonna hear from uh, Attorney Langle, and it is his okay, turn to speak want... for five minutes, okay, starting right now. Go ahead. Chair O'Day, I have a few questions for Ms. Strand. Okay. Go ahead. Ms. Strand, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, this is Joseph Langle, I'm the city attorney. I've got just a few questions for you, starting with, in mid-May, so a few weeks ago, prior to the, that abatement notice being served on you, you had 10 dogs at your home here in Brainerd on Quint Street, correct? In mid-May? Yes. Probably, what did we have in mid-May, 12 maybe, 11 or 12, yeah, so. All right, so as of that time, you had in excess of four dogs at your home, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and that has been true, as you indicated, for a period of roughly three years, correct? No. There have been uh, se several different amounts. We do adoption. We I understand that. I'm asking if you had in excess of four. Uh, oh, correct. Up and down, different numbers. Okay. You indicated that uh, uh, you left with the dogs on the 17th. Are you stating that yep. uh, there are no dogs at your home here on Quinn Street right now? There haven't been any since the 18th of May. Okay. Where are the dogs now? That's our business. <laughs> are the dogs outside the city of Brainerd? You betcha. Uh, are you stating then that are these dogs remaining outside the city of Brainerd from here on out? I think I stated that we bought property two days after the city council rejected my request for an in-home permit. I understand that. That's not my fair. question. Are you, is it your <laughs> testimony that you intend to keep the dogs outside the city of Brainerd from this point forward? We are selling our home in Brainerd that we love being at because of you people. What? I think that indicates that we're not coming back. Hello? Well, I wait, I, I want a clear answer as to whether what your intentions are with respect to the dogs. Because what you you know, I'm I'm telling you right now, we're not in our home. The dogs are not there. Not that it's anybody's business. We own our home in Brainerd. I own a rescue. Legally, the state and the federal government says I can have them there. Brainerd doesn't offer a permit, which gives me the right to have them there. My, my personal dogs are registered. We are perfectly legal to be there. Well, what Ms. you're Strand. doing is illegal. Ms. Strand. What you're doing is illegal. Well, we are gone from the property. Cheryl, That's please let to know. please let Attorney Langle speak. We are, I said yes. Yeah. We are gone from the property. I understand that you said you're gone from the property. My question goes to whether this violation has been abated by the property owner, you. So my question is, is it your intention to keep the dogs off of that property going forward? If there's a threat of somebody stealing them, you bet. These dogs belong to the rescue, not me personally. You touch them, and it will not be a good situation. They're not mine personally, OK? Are you consenting to an inspection of your home to verify that the dogs have been abated from the house? <laughs> no. No, I have cameras up there. Nobody's going to break into my home. I'm not asking if somebody's going to break into home. it, Ms. Strand. I'm no, asking if you would consent, yes or no? No. Okay. There's no reason to go there. We're not there. Well, I don't want, geez. The, the point is to verify to it. There. All right. I, okay. I don't know if we no. need to do any more. I've heard enough. Um, I'm telling you we're not Cheryl. there. Cheryl. I can show you where we're at. Cheryl. I can send you video. Cheryl. I can send you Can you Can you please allow there. other people to speak? Yeah, but okay, can we've I heard speak? enough. I understand what you're saying. Okay. You've said it multiple We're not times. There. Okay. We're are very you going to continue to interrupt, or are you going to give me at least one minute to speak? Okay. Who Who is this? This is Michael Day. 
Oh, hi, Mike. So, it's really hard to yeah. side with somebody who doesn't see that they're in the wrong. You're breaking the law. According, hey, according to the listen. State and the federal government. One minute. Okay. That's all I need. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're breaking the law. I understand what that a, do a dog rescue is a good thing. A dog <laughs> rescue, yeah. stop interrupting. I converse. This isn't a conversation. You've been breaking the law for years, and then you blame the city for having a law that already existed that you've been breaking. I love dogs. Uh -huh. The law is that you can have four dogs. Nobody wants to come take your dogs. They just want you to have four dogs or less. That's it. That's and all I it is. And, and you're playing a victim because you want 12. I, Nobody wants a neighbor with 12 yeah. dogs. Uh, okay? Um, our neighbors love to rescue. Okay. I've had enough. I, I don't know if you guys want to put in any recommendation. But... Um, Listen, the neighbors supported us. They sent you a letter. Um, you can so, talk to them. Go ahead, Joe. Chair O'Day, so at they this point, the the um, the committee can make findings on the record. It doesn't have to be in writing at or, this point, but we do. We not, will need findings in writing pursuant to the ordinance at some point here. So okay. if you want, We're we can continue the hearing until next meeting. Technically, it's a 10-day time period, but... It, Ms. Strand, stop talking. I had another chance to speak. We're going to mute you right now, Cheryl, so we can get through this. So you can, the, the members can continue the hearing to the next meeting. I don't want to continue this. This, then, this has been. Then what we need to do is what we'd have to approve findings. The findings have to be in writing and they have to be approved within 10 days of this date, which means we'd have to have a special meeting of, of this body to approve the findings because the ordinance doesn't allow us to go 14 days or whatever. I don't think it needs to be fast-tracked. I think, I think you'll, we do the, the findings, and then we do it next meeting. She had already taken care of getting the dogs out, it sounds like. So there's no point in an abatement appeal. It's, it's, it, she's trying to appeal the entire process that's been going on for over a year now. I don't see the city doing anything wrong because they're just enforcing an ordinance. Am I correct? You are correct that if the dogs are gone and she has abated it, mm -hmm. okay, then we're, then the city does not have to take any action. Now, if there's any hint of those dogs back in the property, we can get a warrant and, and go back in and, and, and search that property and see if we have to start this process over again. Okay. See, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the, the committee could could uh, state or find that, uh, based upon her comments today, that the uh, nuisance has been abated voluntarily by the property owner, okay? Mm -hmm. And that because of that, the city needs not take any more action at this time and, and just leave it at that. I mean, it's no different than any other nuisance. Somebody has a garbage pile, they take care right. of the garbage pile, we're done. Uh, so yeah, we could do it that way. Okay. As long as she understands that if those dog comes back, then we're right back to where we were. Right. That makes sense to me. That makes the most sense. I don't know if you guys have anything yeah, that, to add. And, and that's basically what we've always done. We're not after the money. We're just after the abatement of the nuisance. And if those dogs are gone, that's all that I'm after. Yeah, this appeal is purely about the abatement. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. Now, I think you understand where our recommendation is do we have to make a motion do we have to do anything yeah this because this body is acting as a, a hearing examiner the three of you together uh we would need a motion to that effect a motion and approval yep for the record so a motion for approval of the abatement a, a motion it would be a motion to um Ex uh, affirm the it, accept it, the well it's it's a motion acknowledging that the that the property owner has abated the nuisance as requested by the abatement order and that no further action at this time is required by city staff. So moved. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Would this be the time where there is more discussion on either side if we were going to open it up, or is it not? I, this is entirely up in your hands at this point. Okay. So. Heard enough? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hearing no more discussion, go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Same sign. Motion passes. Now, Cheryl. Are you still on? You can unmute Cheryl. Cheryl, could you hit star six? Thanks for muting me. Well, you wouldn't stop interrupting everyone, so that's what kind of happens. But do you are you clear well, on on I what we we've done here? Yeah, I can hear it. But my, my other question is, how would you guys even know which dogs are our personal registered licensed dogs and which ones aren't? We would count to five, Cheryl. Money. We would count to five. What? <laughs> if there's more what than do four mean? dogs. We, we have, the city has the list of the registered dogs. Oh. And the city keeps a list of registered dogs. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. Okay, that's, that's my this point. Is, 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 Cheryl, you're not. But we're the, not going back there. Cheryl, not you're not the victim in this. The you're not the victim in this. Oh, yes, you are I the am. perpetrator in this. And the city's moving forward. Perpetrator. There's been no crime. That's my point. Do you, do you understand, understand Cheryl? Cheryl, do you understand what... Do you understand what you've done? You couldn't work with me? You couldn't allow a business to run peacefully? Cheryl, in the neighborhood this that you're in, that's not allowed in the city. That's just the way it is. You could have done it in an industrial look, area look, or anywhere like else. But this... truck. Oh, hey. Okay. All right. You I've know, heard it's a shame. Have a good night. It's a shame. No, but the, but the, the council members can break the ordinances. And... No, they can't. No one can. Okay. Have a good night, Cheryl. We're going to end this meeting, moving to the council meeting. Have a good night. Do we have a motion to move to adjourn? Second. We have a motion to adjourn, a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, same sign. We are adjourned. No.